Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Sorry it's been so long. Anyways, I thought it'd be really fun to do a little art tutorial. Not that I think I'm very good at tutorials, but it's quarantined, so it's not like we have anything else to do here, you know? Painting is an adventure. At least, that's what I tell myself. So let's get started. So I have the reference image that I took pulled up on my computer, which is uh, right behind the camera. And so I'm going to look at that and draw from there. And I'm just going to be using a normal number two pencil. I, I don't know, the, some people like use really fancy pencils and all that. I, I, I mean, for me, like a number two pencil is just fine. So I'm going to start out with just doing kind of the angle of the bridge. And I want it to go like from here to here. And then I'm just gonna lay out where I want the pier of the bridge. I, I'm trying to generally get this on a third here. I know the third is technically over here, but I want to position this kind of on the third, just because rules of thirds. Um, you don't always have to follow them, but I find them helpful a lot of times. So I narrated the entirety of this video, and now that I'm editing it, it feels a bit boring to listen to me talk about every single detail that I did. I swear, I talk like a tenured professor who either doesn't know that they're really boring, or doesn't care at all which is fun, because I've had my fair share of that. Basically, here I'm just trying to sketch out the general shapes of the buildings. You don't have to go all out with all the shading and super fine details, but your sketch should be a guide that leads out where you want to eventually block in all of your colors. Now that the sketch is done, it's time to bring out the water. For some reason I thought I could make that like really dramatic or something, but no, I'm just like getting a cup of water to use for the paint. Ne never mind, let's just... I'm going to be using these two brushes for the piece, um, a 3-8 flat and a number 7 round. Lately I've been using only these two, and I feel like you get really loose brushwork as well as a good amount of detail with these, so that's why I've been using those. I started by blocking out the shapes of the clouds in the sky. I'm using a mixture of cerulean blue and a bit of burnt umber. Actually, I'm not sure, to be honest. I I, I kind of just mix whatever's left over on my palette from the last time I used it. Point is, I'm using a kind of grayed out blue. I'm also using a gray color for the base of the East River. Um, and this picture was taken on a gray day, so I tried to emphasize the lack of vibrancy and saturation because our lives have absolutely no meaning to them anymore, and that's how I feel right now. And quarantine's really getting to me, and I should really stop talking right now. After I put all the clouds in, I went over the sky again with some water to soften up the edges, and then I defined some of the darker areas. The water, on the other hand, was kind of a pain because I had to do so many layers, but I think it turned out pretty nice. For the bridge itself, I ended up emphasizing the purpleness of the shadows. My kind of go-to mixture for darks is burnt umber with violet and phthalo blue. And then for the actual bridge tower, I tried to emphasize the yellows and the reds in the stonework. And so I used um, a lot of burnt sienna, I used lemon yellow, and ozone crimson as well. Although they didn't end up being very saturated, but that's kind of my fault. For whatever reason, I also kept adding too much water to the paints, which ends up thinning out the color. Uh, for example, as you'll see, I ended up going over like the shadows six times, even though I only do it usually two or three. Mm -hmm. 
my thought process is to kind of just block in the general shapes and not focus on too many details. Although I do get carried away with detail a lot of the time, as you'll probably see. It's not a great habit, to be honest. In painting, you want to more focus on the the overall form of the composition and more getting just the values right before you get into the details. I have a habit of getting right into the details and it sucks and it makes my paintings look like crap. At least that's what I think they do. I should stop talking. For the buildings in the background, I wanted to push them back more because in the picture they're pretty dark and they don't emphasize the depth very much. So to push them back, I tried to decrease the contrast and keep everything pretty light. After you define the general shapes, you can then move into more of the details and the fine tuning. Or you can keep putting multiple coats of paint on because it wasn't dark enough the first time, like I kept doing here. Okay, I'll stop complaining about that. Honestly though, it's better to start off really light and then slowly work your way to darker and darker colors, especially with watercolor, because you can't make things lighter very easily if you already have a lot of color on the paper. And so yeah, now comes just the part of adding in those details, the fine tuning. Um, I mainly focus my effort on the brickwork in the tower of the bridge. And I try to not like overdo it with too many bricks because you don't want to like draw every single brick that was on the tower. You want to basically paint in the most prominent ones. And I also try to like space them out um, in a way that felt natural. Honestly, like sometimes the finishing touches can really make or break a painting and they're a really important part even though they feel like you spent like two seconds on it. It ends up being like one of the most important parts of the painting process. And now we have the finished painting. This is upside down, isn't it? Anyway, so as you can probably... Anyways, as I kind of already mentioned, I emphasized the kind of grayness of this day. I did like a really gray day painting right after like I got back from New York and it was a Riverside church. And I'm honestly not sure I like that as much. So I was kind of nervous coming into this one because yeah, like I, I didn't know how well this would actually turn out, but I'm actually kind of happy with it. I'm not gonna lie, like when I was doing this, I felt like, oh crap, this is just really bad. Like I can't stand everything that I'm doing. And sometimes, you know, when you get into that headspace, you kind of just have to like put it off for like a few days and then come back to it and then you can look at it with fresh eyes and say, okay, maybe this isn't that bad. Yeah, or sometimes you can just like shove it away and then forget about it for a year, like I've done with many oil paintings. Anyways, I think this turned out a lot better than I expected. It's definitely nothing fancy, it's kind of just a simple watercolor, but it's nice. And the composition is pretty simple as well, so you know, this wouldn't be too hard of a painting to do if you wanted to do it. Anyways, that's it for this video. I really don't know what compelled me to do a painting tutorial, but you know what, I felt like doing one, and honestly, painting is kind of the only adventure I can experience right now. Anyways, if you appreciate this painting tutorial, I don't know what this ended up being. Um, leave a like, share it with your friends, subscribe, do all the stuff YouTubers ask you to do at the end of videos. I don't, I don't know how to end this video. Anyway, bye. No, I'm not doing that. Anyways, that's all. I'll see you in the next video.